Hi everyone and welcome back to Learn Neuroradiology. I'm Brent Weinberg. Welcome back to case four of the brain imaging course. Today we're going to look at the fourth set of cases that goes with the brain imaging set. If you haven't been following along with these cases, you can check them out at learnerradiology.com slash brain capstone. Just scroll down to case four and you're going to see the case that we're going to take a look at today. So case four is a 65 year old man who had a possible ground level fall, has altered mental status and is on Coumadin or Warfarin. All right, so here we are on a case four, everyone. We have some images from head CT. Brain windows up here on the top left. We're just gonna double click on that, make it a little bigger here so we can see. We're gonna start our search pattern from the bottom. See again, brain stem surrounded by CSF. Give it the cerebellum. It's a little bit full, but maybe for age, maybe it's okay. And if we start paying attention, we start to see there's a high density collection in the extraaxial space here along the left convexity, going down to the middle cranial fossa here. We look at the basal cisterns here, they look really bad. We don't see any CSF space, probably some blood along the tentorium, maybe some blood in the subarachnoid space there as well. No basal cisterns here, so that's pretty important to see. But anyway, this big hyperdense extraaxial collection, a lot of mass effects is probably a centimeter and a half uh, over a centimeter thick, and we see a ton of mass effect. So we see our left lateral ventricles pushed all the way to the side over here more than a centimeter, centimeter and a half, two centimeters even to the left. And uh, so a ton of midline shift and mass effect from this hematoma. Now we're looking at this hematoma, maybe wondering what space it's in. Uh, we know there's some sutures. Uh, the, the coronal suture should be around here. Uh, we'll take a look at the bone window in just a second, but it's passing that suture. It's wrapping around onto the falcs. So this is likely to be a subdural hematoma. That's gonna be the most common type of hematoma in an older patient, particularly an anticoagulated patient. The other thing we see here is we look, there's a hypodense region uh, right here, which is probably an area of infarct. Looks like it's in the PCA territory there. And uh, so, so that's uh, something that's a complication of herniation there. So this person has a ton of herniation, downward herniation, very dire sort of situation for, for this patient. If we look at the bone window, we can just take a look and you'll be able to see where that, uh, where that suture is. Here you see the collection, it's kind of faint but uh, you know the coronal suture is gonna be uh, right around here. And so it crosses that, so you've got a collection crossing a suture, so you know that it's a, it's a subdural collection. If you take a look at the reformats, you can just see the same thing here. Uh, you see uh, just this large subdural hematoma here. It can window it a little bit so you can see it a little bit better. And uh, you can just see the extraaxial collection there. Tons of mass effect again. Really, brain is pushed uh, pretty badly to the right in this hypodense area right here in the in the PCA distribution. So let's uh, take a look at question four A. That question four A is what additional complication do you see? If you saw as we went through that explanation, there definitely was midline shift, uncle herniation, infarct, and ventricular entrapment of that right lateral ventricle. So you really have all of the above there. You're having all these potential complications of a subdural hemorrhage. And so that's going to be that's going to be your answer. There's all of the above. Question four B is what territory is the infarct in? So we saw that infarct it was on the left. So we can rule out the ones that are on the right. We saw that it's posterior, so that's going to be the left PCA. So that's the answer to your question. There is the left PCA has an infarct. That's from compression of the posterior cerebral artery against the tentorium there, as the secondary to that herniation of the temporal lobe. This is an acute subdural hematoma. Uh, this is essentially crossing the entire hemisphere. This one does have a little area of active blush of contrast on CTA, which I sh I've shown here. So that's just active hemorrhage into that. Again, a risk factor for poor prognosis. In this case, there's a lot of herniation, midline shift, all of those features that we already looked at, uncle herniation. And that left M uh, PCA territory infarct is, like I said, from compression or stretching of that left PCA. See the right lateral ventricle is a little bit enlarged. That's because it's potentially still making CSF, but there's nowhere for it to flow because the foramen of Monroe is really obstructed by all of this mass effect. So you're gonna get some uh, essentially hydrocephalus on the other side, despite the extent of compression elsewhere. Uh, acute subdural hematomas, uh, you know, they can occur from, from in young children and infants from non accidental trauma, mostly in adults, like it's from trauma, MVCs. A lot of times uh, it falls in the elderly or patients on anticoagulation, sometimes both. Uh, now, what's the difference in a subdural and an epidural hematoma? They're kind of summarized here, uh, but a subdural tends to be more crescent shaped, it crosses sutures. Uh, mostly that's from tearing of bridging uh, veins. Uh, so you can have those, a uh, falls, non accidental trauma. Sometimes if you have sag from intracranial hypotension, that can cause a subdural hematoma. 
The treatment of these can be conservative, but uh, you gotta have decompression sometimes. Epidural hematomas tend to be more lentiform. They do not cross sutures. A lot of times they're arterial from middle meningeal branches. They're almost always associated with fractures. If you see a, a hemorrhage and it's not associated with a fracture, think about it being a subdural before you think it's an epidural. These are more likely to have to go to craniotomy. Uh, thank you for tuning in for this case today. Be sure to tune back in. We've got three cases left as part of this set. If you haven't seen the others, go back and take a look at those. Be sure to hit the like button on the video and subscribe so you see notifications about the rest of our videos. Thank you.